Welcome to Mr. Foy's Easel. Uh, this program marks number 100, 100 episodes of Mr. Foy's Easel. In view of that, I thought, well, why not draw a cartoon from this? And those of you who remember all the things I said about the use of circles, you can see I'm still with it. So, he doesn't look as cheerful as I intended, but anyway, this is number 100. And uh, let's look at some more circles as we were doing in our last program. You may remember that I emphasized the versatility of circles and ovals in the creation of cartoon characters. Remember my suggestion that you use a pencil to make crisscross lines there and put a couple of circles, and actually three circles. And from here you get a cartoon face. I should have put that pleased expression on this other fella, shouldn't I? And after you've got your dark lines in place, you can get take your eraser and eliminate the um, pencil lines that you had there as a guide. And uh, so there you have it. So far, it's just review, but today I want to go a step or two further on the creation of cartoon faces. In the first place, you don't have to use the eye circles exactly like that. As in a lot of cartoons, Eyes are represented as, well, like this. Maybe a little circular line or two out to the side. But you don't have to use the uh, circles up close. And then once you become sort of comfortable with creating cartoon faces, you can add a lot of things like, well, different kinds of hair. I've got a couple here, but you can you can do do this for a curly haired character. Or you can if you want to get really wild, you can just start out with a hair like this, really unruly. Hair like a fellow who's been out in the March wind or in a rugged football game or something. Other things you can do to present various aspects of your cartoon character. You can put lines like these which uh, indicate uh, this guy has got a lot of whiskers on his face. Or you can put little lines like this to provide a mustache. And of course you can do all sorts of things extra like a, a bandage or wrinkles, a wrinkled brow. Or eyelids like this, like the first guy I drew a few minutes ago. 
continuing with ways to uh, embellish, if that's the right word, your cartoon character. What about hats and caps? Sometimes I like to just do part of the circle and then instead of completing it, put some kind of hat on like this. Now, most cartoonists, when they're drawing a funny cartoon face, they want to put a hat on. They don't want the hat to look all fashionable and neat. They like to have it kind of battered, maybe even torn a little bit. This fellow looks like he might be about ready to ride the rails. <laughs> Continuing the hat theme. Well, cap like this is a good thing to put on your cartoon face. Well, we're going to take a, a short break now, and then when we come back, we will pursue circles, hats, facial features, and so on. Welcome back. Okay, more about circles with emphasis for a few minutes on hats. Uh, as a rule, cartoonists like to uh, use either old-fashioned or non-stylish headgear, whether it's a man or a woman, as in the case here, a lady who may be proud of her Easter bonnet, but uh, it doesn't, it really doesn't look all that fashionable. Then, of course, there's the Western 10 gallon hat. It looks like the Sheriff of Medicine Bend or something, something like that. In many cartoons, the cartoonist achieves uh, uh, humor by having the hat pulled down over the character's eyes. And this is my own creation here, but I'm, actually I'm thinking about a comic that you probably are familiar with, Beetle Bailey. I don't. I don't think the uh, creator of Beetle Bailey has ever shown Beetle's eyes. He always has his army cap pulled right down over his eyes. Now, one of the uh, principles of cartooning is contrast. And I want to sh show you here the contrast between this uh, hat and this one, or rather the cart contrast between the two characters. Here's a guy whose hat is obviously too big, and here's one. Either his head is too big or his hat is too little, and so humor is achieved in this way. Now, in the use of circles to create cartoon characters, you can also create 
uh, animal characters, and the circle device is useful at least up to a point. Take for instance here, I've got part of a circle, and then I change it just a little bit down at the bottom, and what I'm going to develop from this is an animal character's face. As a rule, we like to uh, give our animal characters a black sort of shiny, sort of shiny nose like this one. And since Easter is upon us, we can have a, a rabbit character. And in a later program, we will talk about how circles are also used with cartoon bodies, uh, especially, I think, with animal characters. But now, in addition to the rabbit, we can have this character here. Notice the almost perfectly round circle. <laughs> and I'm sure you can tell what I'm drawing here. And so it goes. You can use the circular device and to a certain extent even with an animal like a duck got a circle here this is a profile you got the the duck's eye and here's where you have to do a lot of practice I think to get the cartoon duck bill uh, drawn properly you can even use an almost circular uh, figure for an animal, a long-faced animal like a horse. Still using circular eyes, although uh, you'll probably never see a real live horse with a uh, big eyes like that. And take a dog, for example. A, sort of like the duck, you can have a old beagle or some other long-nosed dog. Here I'm using a three-quarter view of the face. Now, this wouldn't be as messy if I had followed my own advice and used the pencil outline to begin with. So there you have. And of course, on and on we go. For example, this is a, a dog looking out at us. This is the front view. I'm using circles kind of like I did with the people cartoon characters. But this is a bulldog. And you know, bulldogs have kind of a saggy jowls. Well, we've done a lot about, I've done a lot of work on circular faces. In a program coming soon, we're going to talk about creating cartoon bodies, both people and animals. Remember, you can contact Mr. Foy's easel at conwaycorp.com.